This idea is currently being challenged. A vocal minority oppose institutional authority and insists that persons should be free from any restrictions that limit their individual freedom. Yet we know from millennia of experience that persons give up some individual freedoms to gain the advantages of living in organized communities. Such relinquishments of individual freedoms are principally based on commitments or covenants expressed or implied. Persons who have been endowed in a temple are responsible to wear a temple garment, an article of clothing not visible because it is worn beneath outer clothing. It reminds endowed members of the sacred covenants they have made and the blessings they have been promised in the holy temple. To achieve those holy purposes, we are instructed to wear temple garments continuously, with the only exceptions being those obviously necessary. Because covenants do not take a day off, to remove one's garments can be understood as a disclaimer of the covenant responsibilities and blessings to which they relate. In contrast, Persons who wear their garments faithfully and keep their temple covenants continually affirm their role as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. That the power they receive from being bound to Christ in their endowments. Brethren and sisters, we welcome you to the temple and hope you will find joy in serving in the house of the Lord this day. Those of you who are here to receive your own endowment should have been washed, anointed, and clothed in the garment of the Holy Priesthood. For those who are representing deceased persons, the ordinances of washing, anointing, and clothing in the garment of the Holy Priesthood, together with the ordaining on behalf of deceased brethren, were performed previously. We will put each of you under covenant to obey the law of the Lord, Brethren and sisters, each of you bring your right arm to the square. You and each of you solemnly covenant and promise before God, angels, and these witnesses at this altar that you will obey the law of the Lord and keep his commandments. Each of you bow your head and say yes. Yes. Thank you. Brethren and sisters, we will now put you under covenant to obey and keep the law of sacrifice. And as Jesus Christ has laid down his life for the redemption of mankind, so we should covenant to sacrifice all that we possess, even our own lives if necessary, in sustaining and defending the kingdom of God. Each of you bring your right arm to the square. You and each of you solemnly covenant and promise before God, angels, and these witnesses at this altar that you will observe and keep the law of sacrifice as contained in the Holy Scriptures as it has been explained to you. Each of you bow your head and say yes. Yes. Thank you. We are required to give unto you the law of the gospel which is the higher law taught by Jesus Christ, as contained in the Holy Scriptures, to give unto you also a charge to avoid all like-mindedness, loud laughter, evil speaking of the Lord's anointed, the taking of the name of God in vain, and every other unholy and impure practice, and to cause you to receive these by covenant. Each of you bring your right arm to the square. Each of you covenant and promise before God, angels, and these witnesses that you will observe and keep the law of the gospel and this charge as it has been explained to you. Each of you bow your head and say yes. Yes. Thank you. We are instructed to give unto you the law of chastity, which is that the women of God's kingdom and the men of God's kingdom 
shall have no sexual relations except with those to whom they are legally and lawfully wedded according to his law. Each of you bring your right arm to the square. You and each of you individually covenant and promise before God, angels, and these witnesses that you will observe and keep the law of chastity as it has been explained to you. Each of you bow your head and say yes. 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 Thank you. We are instructed to give unto you the law of consecration as contained in the book of Doctrine and Covenants in connection with the law of the gospel and the law of sacrifice, which you have already received. It is that you do consecrate yourselves, your time, talents, and everything with which the Lord has blessed you, or with which he may bless you, to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, for the building up of the kingdom of God on the earth, and for the establishment of Zion. Each of you, bring your right arm to the square. You and each of you covenant and promise before God, angels, and these witnesses at this altar that you do accept the law of consecration as contained in the Doctrine and Covenants, in that you do consecrate yourselves, your time, talents, and everything with which the Lord has blessed you, or with which he may bless you, to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, for the building up of the kingdom of God on the earth, and for the establishment of Zion. Each of you, bow your head and say yes. Yes. Thank you. Brethren and sisters, this is the veil of the temple. I will now explain the marks on the veil. These four marks are the marks of the holy priesthood, and corresponding marks are found in your individual garment. On the right is the mark of the square. It is placed in the garment over the right breast, suggesting to the mind exactness and honor in keeping the covenants entered into this day. On the left is the mark of the compass. It is placed in the garment over the left breast, suggesting to the mind an undeviating course leading to eternal life, a constant reminder that desires appetites and passions are to be kept within the bounds the Lord has set, and that all truth may be circumscribed into one great whole. This is the navel mark. It is placed in the garment over the navel, suggesting to the mind the need of constant nourishment to body and spirit. This is the knee mark. It is placed in the right leg of the garment, so as to be over the kneecap, suggesting that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is the Christ. When you yoke yourself to Jesus Christ and do the spiritual work required to overcome the world, he and he alone does have the power to lift you above the pull of this world.
that persons give up some individual freedoms to gain the advantages of living in organized communities. <laughs> 